All right. All right, morning everybody. Thank you for being here. It's a very nice day, at least for now. I know we're supposed to get some clouds rolling in, perhaps some, some showers later. It won't be the rain on anybody's parade, but, but I will. Um, if you look in front of you, there's a couple of brochures uh, that have to do with our topic today. Our safety topic is heat stress, and our wellness topic is having a, a safe and healthy summer. Uh, so, you know, at your leisure, take a look at those. And then if you would, please uh, direct your attention up front. This is Bill Graves. Uh, he's a park ranger with the Erie County Metro Parks, and he's here to talk to us uh, about what the Erie Metro Parks have to offer, and also uh, some of the dangers of going to the Metro Parks and some things to look out for. I know a lot of us spend time outdoors uh, with kids, grandkids, what have you. Um, so hopefully we'll all learn a little something today about the parks. You know, myself not being really from the area, uh, I haven't had much experience with Erie Metro Parks, but that will change this summer. So, Bill Gray, is everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, other than being a ranger, I am the outdoor recreation guy for the park district. That means anything that has to do with playing outside, I'm usually the one doing the instructions, trying to teach people how to do it. I don't even attempt golf. This golf, yes. I actually find that relaxing. But um, so I'm the archery instructor. I'm the canoe instructor. I'm the kayak instructor. I'm the bicycle safety guy. I also cover um, fishing, outdoor cooking, not on a grill. I'm talking open fire with cast iron stuff. And um, so if it's playing outside, it's me for the next four working days. Then I'm retired. Oh. <laughs> Um, the Metro Parks offers all kinds of stuff. That's why I hand out the brochure. Do you guys know that there are 14 of them? No. 14, huh? 14. Most County. of them you can use in Erie County. We're not like Lorain County. We don't creep in other people's counties and put up parks. <laughs> no, we, uh, sounds, sounds like goodwill, doesn't it? Lorain people can't trust but um, yeah, we uh, most of the parks you can actually recreate in. Some of them are a little small to do anything, um, such as Pelton Park. It's real small. It's all hemmed in with the mall and a couple of housing developments, and uh, you don't even get winded walking in it. It's not that big. Um, but we have a couple parks that are isolated, so you can drive by and look at them, but you can't actually get into them because we don't have agreements with the property owners on the outside. Um, and it's on floodplain, so anything we built would be washed away every time it rains. Um, but we do have some big parks. Edison Woods. Edison Woods is a massive park. It's a great park. You see how we're scattered across the county? Mm -hmm. Castellia is a great place to go. It's a nice place to go. They actually have a 5K mapped out there, so you can actually walk a 5K every day. It has hills, so you actually do get a decent workout. You can mountain bike there. Shefflies is over here along the Lorraine River. We're right here at Birmingham. Birmingham Park is just basically a softball diamond. That's about all there is there. There's not a whole lot to do. Um, Castilla Cory is mountain biking, running, walking. There's an observation deck. You can do some birding there if you want to. There's a lot of birders. You don't just have the Cory side. There's the other side of the road, too, on 101. You can walk there too. Just remember to cover yourselves in off because that is a wetlands on the other side, so your walk could turn into a pretty brisk run at one point. <laughs> um, there's Osborne Park, and then there's the Community Foundation Preserve at Eagle Point. It's a big sign you're driving down Cleveland Road. You have to read really fast or you'll miss it all together. Um, but it is a group of several parks put together. So you have um, you have Eagle Point, which is the first one next to the old drive-in. Then you have the Stein and Wildlife Area, which most of the time is closed because there's like four different eagles nests there. When the eagles are nesting, the government doesn't want us going in there and bothering them. Even though when you're out there paddling on the bay with a kayak, they'll come down and steal a fish right out right next to your boat. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> then you have Putnam Marsh. And the last park along there is the wildlife, uh, Wyandotte Wildlife Area. Which is a doggy park? 
part of the the dog park is part of Erie Metro Parks. It's okay. part of Osborne Park. Right, but that's part of the park. Okay. Yeah. Which is now free. We're not charging people. We're not. You don't have to get the shots. It's the Wild West there. You can do it. Bring your dog and go at it. We got tired of the whole pit bull thing. Pit bulls are not bad dogs, they just have a bad reputation. Yeah. But anybody saw anything that remotely looked like a pit bull, they have a state of panic that would ensue. So, you're like, you're on your own. Um, over in Milan, if you want to go over into Milan, we have right here is um, the Milan towpath. Is anybody here familiar with the Greenway thing? You're in River Greenway. It, well, it was a bike trail trail. We got within 250 feet of finishing it, and uh, after, I think it was the 21st court case, they just kept taking us back to court. We said, fine, we're done. We're not going to do it. And we gave all the property back. But um, there is a, a mile walk out and a mile walk back on the mile and towpath. It's really nice this time of year. It's nice in the wintertime. Once again, you are walking with a, you have a marsh alongside of you, so you do need bug repellent, but it's in the shade. You do see a lot of wildlife, and the people are actually nice out there. Um, As so opposed have, to other places? Yeah. <laughs> it, it used to be pretty hostile out there. Back when we were trying to put the rail trail in, you have people scream obscenities at you for walking on their property. But then you have um, the coupling reserve. Coupling Reserve is an um, overnight facility. It will sleep up to 26 people. We also have uh, canoe rentals there. You can book a, a nice weekend with 26 of your closest friends, get the canoes, go for a paddle on the river. Just remember, wherever you paddle to, you got to paddle back. We are not a canoe livery. You can rent canoes outright if you want to. You can call them today and say, hey, I want to rent canoes for a weekend. It's $10 all day. They supply the canoe, the paddles, the life jackets. Hold on a quick. Have you been there? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to ask. Your no, rapids. no rapids. No, no rapids. No okay. No, he bad. needs rapids. Can you get one of those machines that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my rule is if I have to wear a helmet to paddle, I'm not doing it. <laughs> my rule is the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not into that. I'm too old for that. Um, it is a nice facility. You have. Um, They've redone it, so now it's more open. It's made it handicap accessible. Um, and that's in Milan? That's on 113, north of Milan. North of Milan. Yeah. There's about three quarters of a mile of hiking trail in there, too. Yes, I did. Who's done that? Anyone's done that? I've been there. I've done the mighty road. But where you load, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a place right on Mason Road there. There's yeah, the, that's yeah. what I was thinking it was. No, that, that's, that's different. That's, yeah, different. that's different. That's, private, that's private. They're not even in operation anymore. Oh, okay. Um, no, when you're at the coupling, there's the big hill. Everybody's afraid to go down. Mm -hmm. You go down to the bottom of the hill and go all the way to the river. It's about three quarters of a mile to get to the river. And right there is where you launch. The canoes are all there. There's a picnic area a little bit closer. To the hill itself is where you keep all the equipment for paddling. And my number will be down off the wall, so when you end up at I-5s and it's 2 o'clock in the morning, don't call me. I'm not going to come pick you up and take everything back. <laughs> that has happened. We have Huffman Forest Reserve, which is it's an isolated park. It's really nice. It's really primitive. Um, it's off of Huff Road. You've got Arlington on one side. And um, I can't remember the name of the other road on the other. But um, all of the brochures, like your, this one here, the Discover brochure, has the GPS coordinates. So you can put them in and find your way. Um, you might have a little trouble. You get close to Edison Woods, it'll start saying recalculating because the microwave tower messes with GPS systems. But Huffman is it's a beautiful park. It's like my second favorite. Right 
It's not a long walk, but it's a nice one. It's in the shade. Wear your bug repellent in the summertime. Um, we do do like full moon walks. This is one of the favorite places to do it. As you go in there, get out your phone. You can do uh, some owl calls. The owls will call back to you. Uh, just turn your lights off. Walk around there in the dark. And you turn your lights on, you'll see like deer looking at you. It's hilarious. But you have a walk down a long set of stairs into a ravine. And then you go back up a set of stairs and you're up here. This whole area through here is all heavily wooded. You've got pine on one side and regular trees on the other. It was owned by Dr. Huffman. Uh, he was big into the environment. So when he got older and he couldn't take care of the property anymore, he turned it over to us. The trees, the pine trees through here are all planted in straight rows. You kind of feel like you're walking through Wisconsin. The trees are all in straight rows. But um, it's a beautiful park. Ravines all the way around. There's pawpaw trees, if you know what those are. Mm -hmm. Pawpaw trees are um, they're good sized trees. They grow something that looks like a pear or a kiwi. When you cut it open, it smells like bananas. They're really popular like up in the Indiana, Michigan area. Um, they're high in all kinds of vitamins. You can't be fast. I mean, the people know about them, get out there and pick them as soon as they're ready. Um, this is loaded down with raspberry bushes too, which is my favorite. Um, some of the other parks. So what's your favorite if that's your second favorite? My favorite is Edison Woods. I got that second tag. Yeah. I got lost in there. <laughs> <laughs> Edison Woods is great. Everybody gets lost in there. Everybody gets lost in there. We have we had an employee who got lost in there. The ranger, he somebody called looking for help to get out of the woods. He went into the woods. He got lost. And they had to call me to go in and get him and them. Well, I got lost in my backyard. If I went there, no one would find me. Okay. The thing to remember about Edison Woods: if you get lost, just keep walking straight. You're going to come to a road. You're going to come to what? A road. Okay. Yeah. That's what the inside of Edison Woods looks like. It is 1,300 acres. You can run, you can hike, you can ride a horse. You cannot mountain bike. I have tried and tried and tried. They won't approve it. We have a deal with the devil here. We made a deal with the EPA in order to get this. They gave us the money to get it. Edison Woods, back in the 60s, was going to be where Davis Bessie was going to go. And uh, they went out there and they started drilling holes, do soil samples, and like, oh, this is a swamp. We can't build a nuclear power plant on a swamp. So they got stuck with it. Well, then they tried to sell it to the Saturn company. They're going to sell it to GM to put the Saturn plant there. And they went out and drilled the core samples. And like, oh, no, we don't want it. It's a swamp. So they turned it into what is called a carbon bank. Ohio had Edison said, this is a carbon bank. So we get to pollute a whole lot someplace else as long as we've got these trees growing here. It's government. That's how they do things. So they had it for years. They got tired of dealing with it because literally everybody that lived around it, it turned into their own private playground. We had guys living out there that built monster trucks and used it as a test track. We had, we had people with ATVs, motorcycles. We had people poaching all the time. So we asked Ohio Edison, hey, can we buy it? They were like, sure, it's going to cost you this many million dollars. Well, then we went to EPA, and EPA is like, if you're going to keep it natural, we'll give you the money. So we ended up with it. But you have, this doesn't even show all the trails. These are just the main trails. If you see markers like this in the parking lot, that's your emergency, emergency notification thing. So if you have an issue, you can call 911, say you're at this spot, and the EMS people know where to find you. But um, this, this is the big part here. You have Smoky Road in here. This is the majority of the park system as far as it goes. You can walk for miles. I think somebody at one time figured out there's like 70 miles worth of trails, and that doesn't even include the fire breaks out in the meadows that you can walk. But yeah, you can get lost. There are little you are here signs everywhere. Wherever you see one of these, you're gonna have, there's going to be a you are here sign. You can pick up a trail map at either one of the entrances and carry it with you. You know, 
everybody has a GPS system now. You know, what I like to do is I'll go and I'll put like Indomando on and I'll start walking and I can just look down and it'll turn around and follow your little red line back to where you started from. All the maps are laid out going north. I thought you remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the app. I just wrote it down. <laughs> Endo Mondale, there's um, My Tracks is another one. All of them work really good in there, at least close enough to get you back to road. Like I said, if you get lost, start walking in a straight line down a trail, you're going to end up in a road. I had uh, the Y one year got trapped out there. They took kids for a hike, and they were out there for, for almost four or five hours wandering in circles. And they called me. They, luckily, they had a cell phone. But we keep ending up in this big field. That's right here. They kept getting on a trail, they walk around, and end up going right back to that field. And they walk this way, come back to the field, they couldn't find their way out. <laughs> so they had to go in again and bring them out. The kids were crying. <laughs> but, uh, that was you, Marlis. <laughs> Marlis is the leader. If you're going to Edison Woods, you need water. You need off. You need to have some, you take a map with you or have something on your phone to help navigate out. If you do get caught, you can call, dial 911 at one of those points. They will come and get you. You can get into Edison Woods from over here. You can get in from over here. You can get in off of Mason Road. You can get on off of 61. All the trails are marked. They'll take you such and such time to finish the walk. This is supposedly 45 minutes. That's, you know, your average healthy human being can make that walk in 45 minutes. A lot of people, they'll get out there walking and they'll start looking around because it's different. It's like walking onto the set of Lord of the Rings when you go in there. It's old growth. There are the ferns growing underneath the trees. There's always animals running back and forth. You can see everything from wild turkeys. You can see eagles. You'll see deer. There are coyotes out there. Don't feed them. <laughs> there are all. If you're a birding person, this is the place to go look and look for birds. Everything you can possibly imagine. This time of year, the trees aren't completely leafed out yet, so there's a lot of wildflowers. If you go there in the, you go there in the spring, you'll see everything from trillium. Along this trail here, this is the Southridge Trail. If you just walk this, it's a nice walk because this is an abandoned rail line. So it's well drained, and all down through here, there's Dutchman's Bridges in the springtime, there's Trillium, there's May apples, there's all kinds of wildflowers. It's amazing, and it's worth the walk. Walking the meadows right now is really nice too because a lot of the wildflowers are starting to bloom in there too. And you don't have to worry about the mosquitoes and the flies as bad. It's just once you cross that barrier from out here into the green, it's, the mosquitoes can be really bad. We don't spray. You can call and complain about the bugs. We're not going to go in and hunt them down. It, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> but yeah, it's 1,300 acres, and it is, it's an awesome place to go. It's my favorite place to go. I take my kids there. You can blindfold me and dump me in there. When I started 26 years ago, that was my park. So uh, you can blindfold me, dump me in there, and say, find your way out. Not a problem. As soon as I look around, I know where I'm at. Once you've been in there a few times, it's not bad. You can figure your way out pretty, pretty well. Best places to go in are over here and walk through the orchard and go down the trail. Or to park over in this area. This is where the bridal trails start. They can ride anywhere but this loop here and this here. There is the, what they call the adventure walkway, which it's about three quarters of a mile boardwalk that goes through, goes through just a small portion of the woods. And they have all these interpretive signs explaining to you this is how the granite from uh, Canada ended up down here. And uh, they tell, explain the glacier grooves. That they're, it's all elevated so let the salamanders, because salamanders migrate through that area. It's a marshy area. That's one you can't get lost on. Yeah, it takes you a loop, brings you right back. <laughs> I'm assuming you have to trail, trail your own horses. Huh? You have to trail your own horses. We don't have a stables. That was a dream at one time. And uh, this, when I was, I was in the Army before I became a ranger. 
the park district. I was a game warden for Army and an MP. And in the evenings, I did mounted patrol on base on a horse. And uh, they said, well, you'd be perfect to run our stables. And I started, well, okay, we're going to need this, this, and this, because I'm a horse guy. Sold my horses, but I was a horse guy one time. They're like, it's going to take that much? I said, yeah. It's a lot of work. you got to hire somebody to sleep in the stables all the time in case of fire. Forget it. They're not doing it. It's like, whew. Because um, the, the at that time, our director was one of those guys like, well, great. You're, you're in charge. You do, you're, you do it all. The Edison Woods is my favorite. They do hay rides there. It's one of the big places that they like to do hay rides. They like to do hay rides over at Osborne Park. If, you know, if your thing isn't walking, it's great. You can go out there, you, they actually take you through, and you can do bird watching by wagon. They're talking about doing, starting this fall, doing a breakfast program where you can go, you, they'll cook you breakfast, then you can go birding with them. Something we did like 20 years ago, and we stopped doing it. Um, Eagle Point also has, let's see if I can bring that one up, that is our uh, observation platform at Eagle Point. It's trying. It's trying. It looks like we got kind of low internet reception at the moment. The Eagle Point, that's their observation platform. You're supposed to be able to launch kayaks and canoes from there. Can't do that right now. It's under about four feet of water. But um, they do run paddling programs out of there. Um, I have one coming up at the Coupling Reserve on the 28th. This is my last day. Why not the S&B 28th? It's a full moon paddle where we're going to go paddling. We're going to go kayak paddling. I don't like doing the canoe paddling. You guys might like all, might like each other. I put two of you in a canoe together. You'll never talk to each other again. <laughs> <laughs> so I stick to doing just the kayak program. Well, there might be somebody I want to do that with. <laughs> <laughs> One thinking about what? my wife. Don't call her. <laughs> yeah, I've watched a lot of relationships deteriorate <laughs> during one of those times. <laughs> before the wedding, huh? Oh yeah, they, well there was a, a couple, they were engaged, they came last year to our, my last ever full moon canoe float. And uh, he was being all macho and saying, well I, I've got this covered, I, we don't have to listen to him about this, we don't have to listen to him about that, I've got this, I've got this. And they got out there in the canoe and they're paddling along and they hit a log and boom, she's like, I told you that log was there. Well, you guys tell me which way to steer. <laughs> Stop paddling. You're dragging your paddle. They were arguing the whole entire time. They got back. She jumped out of the canoe and left and just dumped her stuff on the bank, got in the car and drove off and left him there. Oh. Nobody would help him out. He was like, no, you're a jerk all night long. <laughs> I gave her a ride to the top of the hill so he could call for a cab. Well, that's hilarious. But you have, this is all walking trail, they say, but there are trails crisscrossing across through here. You have a launch there and a launch there. And they're going to be putting in, everybody, anybody know what a dry foot launch is? We have one in Sandusky now, down on Big Island. They're going to put in a, a dock with a paddle launch on the end. It'll be on rollers, so you'll be able to just get in your, your boat, Give yourself a little pole and you'll roll right off into the water. You don't have to get yeah, Now, where is this Eagle Point is on next to the lake? It is next to the East and Dusky Bay. Okay. Whitewater guy wouldn't know anything what? about that. This is which, way. you have Cleveland Road. This is Cleveland Road. The old Sandusky Drive and sits right there. Those oh, of you who are like okay. me and Boomer. Way down there. Yeah, so you you're way, you have, way. You, have, oh, a, it be on you have Sports Force, mm -hmm. then you have the Lake Erie Towing, then you have the abandoned hotel, then you have the Sandusky <laughs> Drive-In, and then you have Eagle Point. When you're driving down Cleveland Road, there's going to be this bulletin board, and it's going to have, looks like the alphabet laid out across the sign. You're supposed to read at 55, <coughs> 60 miles an hour. It says Community Foundation Preserve at Eagle Point. 
and there's a little tiny sign about the size of a postcard that tells you you can paddle launch there. <laughs> this is um, this whole area throughout this here is full of a miniature train track. The Erie Metro live steamers have uh, trains they run there. Once a month they give free rides on the trains. But you got to put in your own canoes and stuff? There's no rental or there is rental? There is no rental that they run out of there. They plan on it. They're, they're talking now about doing a rental. They haven't really realized how much work it is because I've handled all the paddle stuff. And they've had five years to figure out how to do this. And now they're like, you've got four days left. you got to tell us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I've said my piece. I'm done. You guys what about Big out. Island? They have rent that Big Island? Big Island is a free public launch. It's run by the city of Sandusky in the state. They have a real nice dock there. It's probably four or five feet wide with a dry foot launch on it. The BYO canoe? Yep. Bring your own. Uh, the city is planning on doing some programs in the future. They want to be able to do some rentals and stuff out of there. They're trying to come up with what's called a paddle share, if you guys are familiar with that. It's where there'll be a lockers with racks and kayaks will be cabled into it and you go up, you put your bank card in there, they charge you the rental fee, it opens up a locker and releases the cable, you can grab your equipment, you can go for a paddle. And when you come back, you put it back and it charges you for the amount of time you were gone. Yeah, paddling on the, it's not white water, but it is nice to go out there and paddle on the bay. It's nice out there. Yeah. I love doing programs out there. I've done a couple, a handful of full moon trips out there. Full moon trips, first they were great because everybody was a little scared and you kind of stuck with the group. And then a couple of the veterans one night, we put a flashing red light where we launched so we can find our way back. Well, some ladies decided they'd had enough, and they took off after the flashing red light, but they were chasing a cell phone tower in Bayview. <laughs> <laughs> I had to chase them down. <laughs> what is that cottage in the park, in that park there? It's called the Enchanted Cottage. It is a rentable facility. It's popular with like children's programs. Um, they, the inside of it, it's what it is. It's, it's the original Stockdale house. Back in uh, I think it was the 30s or 40s, the Stockdales built it when they got married. And uh, it's got like a Dutch door that, for the outside. It's all wooden. It's it's a beautiful little place. This was the Stockdales garage for their tractor. The family, literally in the 40s, was living off the grid there. They had a generator that they powered up car batteries to give them light at night. And uh, they had well water. Uh, the whole East Bay at one time was their property. It was orchards and cornfields and, and rice fields and everything. And then the bay just took it over. Um, but the cottage has got a big deck off the side of it there for people, because it's not big enough for more than maybe 10, 15 people on the inside. On the outside, they have the big deck for entertaining, and they do children's stories in there because the walls are painted with, you know, like storybook pictures mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's kind of, it's a neat little place. And you can rent it? You can rent it. Birthday parties, we've had graduation parties there, which I thought was a little strange. There's even been weddings. <laughs> uh, there's a couple that they were dressed like prince and princess, and they had a fairy tale wedding in, inside the enchanted cottage. <laughs> Did they uh, go out kayaking after that? No. <laughs> they were kind of plus size people, so. <laughs> they do. Um, Let's see, so you have the Stein and Wildlife area, like I said, you can walk out there, but it's a very small window because when it's not the eagles, then hunting season begins. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just for kids to hunt. Adults, unfortunately, can't hunt there. Um, they do a lottery once a year, and kids get to draw dates that they can go out there and hunt. Then you have uh, 
from there it becomes Putnam Marsh, which that's a place eventually we'll be able to get access to. We've been arguing with the state forever, but they're going to widen Cleveland Road, so hopefully they'll give us a driveway. They wouldn't give us a driveway, so now they're talking about widening Cleveland Road to four lanes. So Is that for sure? Yeah. It's like when are they starting construction on? That's how I get here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, they'll probably wait till next season when Cedar Point opens, and they'll start sure. construction. Yeah. I think it's in a couple of years before it starts, because they were talking about it yeah, then you have Wyandotte Wetland and Barnes Extension. Awesome place to walk. You don't have to worry about bugs too bad. Um, it's all wide open. You don't have to worry about getting lost. If you walk all the way out to the far end, all you got to do is turn around and you can see the parking lot. And I've measured out. Um, I used to practice running 5Ks in there. It's, it's a good place to do that. And you have the Wakefield property, which is all the way over in Vermilion. I don't even know if they have a map for this one. I'll drive all the way over there. Nope, no map. It's a small chunk of beach in downtown Vermilion, right alongside the Vermilion River. You can look over and see the lagoons. Um, we don't do a lot of programming there. We haven't over the past few years because the people, it was a private. We ended up with the property because the city of Vermilion didn't want the property and the people who owned the property wanted to get, get rid of it. It was, they thought we were going to keep the house. It was a big house with indoor pool and all this and we're like, no, the place has fallen in. We just, we tore it down and then turned it into a nice little beach area. You can access it from the beach or you can go down the private road now because there's only one house there and um, get on it. There's not a whole lot to it. You could launch a canoe or kayak from there if you wanted to, or you can fish in the Vermilion River and look at the big houses that are over in the lagoons there. Um, but they have an accessible wheelchair thing there now at the beach. Oops. Oh, we've done the cover the parks anyway. Okay. Um, yes. It is, it, as far as what you need to, for the parks, you have to remember water. It's like the, the main thing. Sunscreen. If you're going paddling, you got it. Life jackets. We offer the life jackets. You have to use the life jackets. If you get pulled over by watercraft on some rare occasion, they're going to nail you for life jacket. You just have to have the life jacket in your boat. I prefer if you have them on. If you come to any of the programs I'm doing, everybody wears a life jacket or you don't go. I've had people that they refuse to put it on. I'm like, bye take everything away, you're, you're on your own. We've always got people standing in line waiting to go. Um, life jackets, if you're paddling. Bug spray. They, we, they did the tick drag at our parks. They were a little disappointed. <laughs> they didn't have the, they kept saying, are those are disease ticks? They sent people who didn't know what ticks to look for. So we had to send natural stuff with them to, to help with the tick drag. <laughs> but um, we don't have